Hi everyone, my name is Savannah Vargas. I am a student at the University of Florida and this summer I'm working with the SURE program and do with um, as well as Professor Stephen Wright and we are working on the investigation of transient pressures in rapidly filling pipelines. That is the title of our project. And I'm working alongside Kelly Detterman, which is a student at MIT, and we are focusing on the geysering effect. This effect is basically the rapidly filling of a storage tunnel in which large amounts of storm water come in, it enters, and it, it builds up enough pressure to blow and burst off the, the manhole, the caps of the manhole, and cause this geysering effect, as you can see in the pictures. And this effect is extremely dangerous. When cars are driving by, sometimes this is, it's a rare occurrence, but sometimes it just, it happens out of nowhere during these storms, and it can cause accidents and there's just large inconveniences on the street. So from you can see from the pictures as well, like first the, the pressure builds up enough to burst out the cap, this occurs, and then this geysering effect is what we've been researching all summer. And it's a continuation of research. Basically, we've already noticed that it's cause, the cause of it is an air-water mixture. And what we are doing, what our focus is, is that we are looking at the model, this model named Shaft, and it's a model that's a recent development in which Professor Wright, alongside Jose, Dr. Jose Vasconcelos, which is a professor at Alabama, he used to be a student at um, Michigan as well, but now he's, he's, uh, he graduated and he moved on, and he's in Alabama as well. He's also working on this project in which he developed this program called SHAFT, and it can predict the location and volume of the air trapped in the tunnel, the air that occurs once this, the stormwater comes into the tunnels although it does not account for the air migration and the release. So as you can see from the pictures, once the water, this is a cut section from the pipe. So once the water enters the pipe, it reflects off the cap of the, the end of the tunnel, and then it comes back and it forms these air pockets in which the, the pressure, it causes it to come out the manhole shaft. So the shaft model, it does predict rather severe pressure fluctuations and there's a company in London that has contacted Professor Wright to determine whether the shaft model is accurate enough and it should be used for the designs of underwater storage um, tunnels. So what we are focusing on this summer is whether it's um, a realistic or simply an artifact of a simplified model form formulation. If this model is realistic, if, if it gives enough data to continue and to actually um, follow out with the design. The research approach. Uh, we began with laboratory experiments that were performed to measure the pressure variations using a pressure transducer with the interaction of the filling water and a trapped air pocket. What we basically did is we began with three different setups in which um, there's 47 feet long of pipe connected to a valve and a reservoir, and then from there we just determined whether um, different volumes of the air, of the, air vo of, of the volume of the air were able to move around and cause, what volumes of the air were able to cause the, the largest pressure variations. And the focus was to find the conditions that control the pressure exerted by the water flowing in these tunnels and ultimately reduce these geysering ev events that occur during periods of strong storms, as I mentioned earlier. And what we came up with, what we determined using the data from the pressure transducers, we graphed it on Excel and we determined that quite large pressure fluctuations were observed in the experiments. We determined that attention needs to be paid to these phenomena during tunnel design and the largest pressure rises occur for small trapped air volumes. So from you can see in this, in this graph, this is a typical trend in which uh, we determined from our setups. And when you can see the line from the beginning, it's a constant atmospheric pressure. And once the valve is open and the, air is, and the water is released into the, the pipe, we, we obtained a maximum pressure and then a minimum pressure. And that's the value that we were mostly looking at because it's causing a spring-like formation in which the flowing water is compressing the air and then coming back and then rebounding and oscillating until it levels out. And although these numerical pre uh, predictions do not represent the phenomena responsible for these large pressure rises, it was confirmed that the pressure variations are a matter for concern in tunnel design. So what we did determine and what my professor is going to actually in the point he's about to publish this paper and tell this company is that this program, it, it, is, it is not accounting for these pressure variations and it's not an accurate enough model to, to basically have this, um, to basically have the, use the program for the design. So um, what I wanted to say, or in conclusion, uh, this project has been a very, very uh, significant part of my development in the engineering 
world, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. And um, I would like to thank Professor Wright for this opportunity to work with him, as well as for the SHARE program for to be here this summer. And everyone at the University of Michigan, thank you very much.